Hello everyone. Uh, so today I'm going to explain you about file name port feature in uh, Amazon S3 data object that has been added in the 10.4 version. So uh, myself Durgesh, uh, I'm a lead engineer in a big data management team, uh, global customer support. So let's begin the session and uh, I'll be showing you a small demo as well, uh, how to implement this feature in um, uh, 10.4 and leverage the use case of it. All right. Okay, so basically uh, file name port is another um, a column which is added default to the data object um, uh, for the S3 uh, in 10.4. Uh, so, a uh, major use case for this is to uh, create a partition directory and uh, data to be loaded into the, those directories upon which uh, a tables can be created uh, for the partition columns. Uh, so, it's, it's similar to the world of Hive tables having the partition columns in it, which creates a separate directories uh, in, at the uh, parent table location and um, um, helps in the retrieving the data faster uh, since the tables are partitioned. Uh, so similar uh, similar way, um, this feature has been incorporated to the uh, S3 data objects itself. So with this port, uh, any, any input columns can be linked to this port and um, in the target, subsequent directories gets created based on the data values uh, under those directories and um, and further it can be leveraged on creating an external table using uh, amazon athena databases and so on so i'll be i'll be showing you in the same uh, in the demo as well uh, so basic uh, feature for uh, file import would be uh, it's a string port and having a position of 1024 and uh, it in, in the runtime uh, mapping runtime it creates a uh, directory in an S3 buckets and uh, put our data files under those directories. And uh, the basic thing is uh, the rollover time and the rollover size of the particular data file. Uh, it can be configurable and uh, by default, uh, it is one GB and one R. Um, and uh, so once the rollover value or uh, has been reached or rollover size has been reached, it creates a subsequent uh, uh, part of a file uh, and start loading the data into those files. Um, so as I said, uh, subdirectories are created in the specified uh, S3 target location for each value in the file input. Um, so yeah, that's that's major thing about uh, file input and uh, this is a really a um, wonderful feature uh, to uh, leverage uh, creating an uh, um, Athena tables uh, on the S3 buckets and the S3 directories, which is already uh, loaded in, in a partition fashion. And um, it will be a simpler job to create an Athena tables uh, on the Athena databases, which will reduce a lot of effort of creating the data files uh, based on the partition structure and uh, so on. So in Informatica 10.4 uh, gives um, gives this option with from file import and same can be achieved with uh, various uh, um, file types, Abro, JSON, Parquet and flat file options. And moreover, uh, this feature uh, can be used in native mode and also in the runtime uh, uh, Spark pushdown jobs. So just to uh, show you how uh, the directories uh, created in the S3 uh, buckets. Um, so yeah, here, uh, as you can see, out parent is uh, the file name, uh, native name of a target data object which I have created. And based on that, it creates 33 different uh, values of the date where um, uh, input data gets stored based on the dates into those uh, directories uh, in a parquet format, which I have created. Yeah. So there is an option, I mean, uh, 
there's a configuration that you can still use with this file name port uh, to include multiple columns in it, which will create uh, subdirectories uh, and uh, multiple partitions um, with parent partition and a child partition, and then the data file will be placed into that. Uh, as you can see in the screenshot, there's an example which you can see. Uh, uh, one partition is created on the dates and the other partition is created on the uh, BDM product values. Uh, so, and inside that there is a data file created. So similarly, uh, you can create sub partitions on it. Um, for uh, creating uh, sub partitions, uh, is shown in the next video, which I'll be uh, giving in the reference link as well. Uh, so in this demo, I'll just show you how the basic uh, file name port can be achieved um, and how can we create a, dire a directory is based on the input values. So let's begin for the demo. Okay, uh, so here is the simple mapping that I have created uh, where I'm reading uh, from S3 as a parquet format and loading it into an S3 again uh, in the same parquet format, uh, but uh, with the partition directories. Uh, so here um, in the target S3 object, I I can get a additional column called file name port. Since any S3 data object that you create, either source or target, you will get this file name port. So in the source also, you will have this option, uh, which you can uh, use it again for uh, uh, reading it from multiple uh, directory files in the source uh, by just giving in a regular expression to read the data from the source and uh, so in this demo i am just showing it for the target data object um, where uh, it creates a uh, sub directories based on the input columns and um, uh, loaded into an s3 bucket in, a, in any format type of a file that you want so so here uh, in the source i have uh, certain columns um, file import and uh, date and the BDM pro as a column values, which uh, so I am creating a file name um, port based on the date. So I want to create a partition based on the date, and hence I link the date column um, to the respective file name port here. So now what happens is any value that is a distinct value of this particular column gets in creates subdirectories based on those values and uh, creates a subdirectory in S3 and loads the respective data fired into the uh, that particular directory. So it's the same thing. Uh, if there are multiple uh, rows of the same values, then the, that all those rows goes into the single data file under that subdirectory. So let me just uh, run it. Okay, uh, there are two few options uh, on this target, which I would like to show you here. Uh, so something uh, you would see override file if exist. Um, there's a checkbox to select yes or no. Uh, this uh, what does this uh, what what does this option depicts is uh, if you select it, uh, then every time when you run a mapping, it overrides the data file and uh, uh, creates a new data file. So but but if you don't want to override the existing data file and you want to create a every time uh, I mean you need to have an history of the all the data files, then what you would need to select is uh, uncheck this tick box so that uh, every time when you run a mapping, uh, the data file doesn't get overridden and it creates a new data file for the respective uh, data sources. All right. So let me just uh, trigger this mapping and uh, start it again. Okay, so before running the mapping, I would like to show you one more thing. Uh, so the directory that gets created uh, would be presided with the folder name and that folder name would be based on the native name of a target object that you give. So say like uh, if I have given uh, this as a native name, uh, my folder will be should be get created with this uh, the same native name, or else uh, you would uh, you would give the name over here uh, file name, uh, and this will be taken as a precedence for creating any of the folders uh, um, or subdirectory which gets which gets created. 
Um, so if you don't give any file name over here, then the default value, which will be picked from the native name that you have given. So, and uh, I'll, I'll show you both the options. Um, how, how is the structure that gets created with override file if exist and uh, unchecking this, what would be the structure of the folder that it gets created. So currently I, in my source, I have only one record for, uh, for one record with one particular date. Um, and uh, so I would should be able to see the same thing in the target as well. So I'm just uh, running it now. So it, it takes some time. So yeah, it's completed. Uh, let me show you the structure that it has created in the S3 and the data files. So um, I have set it as uh, GCS instances my S3 bucket and the target uh, S3 object. And as you can see, um, uh, there are, uh, it created the directories with the demo KB, which we have defined uh, in our um, target data object with the file name as demo KB. The same way it has created a directory in the S3 bucket as well. So here's the difference. So what happens is, uh, so currently I have selected an um, option as override if file exists. So what in that in that scenario, it creates the directory with uh, with the name of the file, which I have, which we have given in the object. And then under that, uh, we could see uh, it it has created a partition with the with the column values that it has for the date in the input input column and under that we will have the uh, data file that it is it, it got created all right so, and uh, similarly um, for the op uh, if we unselect this then what happens is uh, since it has to uh, maintain the history of the data files that is created hence uh, it would create uh, directory structures based on the timestamp to it so let me show you that as well. so uh, as you can see this was the one with the option when you selected override if file exists and this is when when you don't select that so here you can see it has created a folder with the timestamp to it because it has to maintain the uh, history so every time when you run the mapping a uh, new folder will be created with the timestamp and um, and subsequent data files gets uh, loaded into those directories all right so this was uh, something uh, with the file name port that we had and and uh, regarding uh, creating a sub partitions uh, for the multiple columns to be added um, i'll I'll be sharing the link in the description for the another video, which you can uh, take a look and uh, leverage it for the use cases. So yeah, that's it in the demo. Um, so we would love to hear your feedback uh, on this video or if you have any queries or anything, you can reach out to us uh, through an email or through our Twitter handle and we would uh, yeah, be helping you for any other queries also we have uh, uh, data in engineering integration communities where you can post your queries and we would be able to uh, help you out there as well